Welcome to another episode of the Sun Foundation's Clean Water Celebration, Clean Water Champions. Today we meet a storyteller deeply rooted in his story of origin. Where did your ancestors come from? What are their stories? What is our ancestral relationship to water? And do you like salmon? Who are your grandparents? What is the wisdom we can learn from them? This story talks about the creation of humans. Think about it. You are a lucky pile of mud. Most mud just lays there like some people you might know. But you can play basketball and video games. You can write poetry and change the world. We are made of earth. How many of you eat food? Where does the food grow? You are made of earth, clay and water. We call this planet Earth, but it should be called water. Three quarters of the Earth covered with water, and you are three quarters water. My ancestors are Cherokee. On my mom's side, 100% German. But my dad, he's a mongrel, a mutt like me, like many of you. Part Polish, part Welsh, maybe some Czech in there because the boundaries kept changing. Cherokee, but mostly Scottish and Irish. I have a foot on both of those emerald green islands. And here is a poem, a song, that's one of the oldest we know from Ireland, the Song of the Sea. Fain we ask Aaron, fair in our oceans, motions to mountains, fountains and bowers, showers, rills rushing, gushing waves welling, swelling streams calling me home. Think about salmon. Anybody besides me like to eat fish? Salmon begin as a tiny little egg, and so did you. In your mama, in the womb, is the same amount of salt that's in the sea. You carry the salt in your bloodstreams. So imagine now you are a fish. Imagine you are a salmon. Born a tiny egg high in a mountain stream. The egg hatches and becomes a minnow. The minnow swims out into the creek. And it grows and swims down the stream into the river, down the river to the ocean. And then it spends years migrating in a great circle of the ocean. And when the time is right, and you will know when the time is right, it smells its way home. Not this stream, not that stream. It always returns to the same stream it was born in leaping over waterfalls, rushing against the current up to that very same spot in the creek. It smells like home, and it lays an egg. And this story doesn't end. This story begins again. Fain we ask Aaron, fair in our oceans, motions to mountains, fountains and bowers, showers, rills rushing, gushing waves welling, swelling streams calling me home. My dad used to tell me, eat more fish. It's brain food. I thought it was some old folk tale. Eat more fish. And then I grew up and became a scientist and I found out Fish protein is very similar to brain protein, and the more fish you eat, the smarter you get. Who wants to eat more fish? And actually, one of the differences between caveman, Neolithic, Cro-Magnon, and humans, Homo sapiens, is our ancestors lived by the sea and streams and rivers, and we ate more fish. So maybe it's not a folk tale. A story a thousand years old from Ireland Finn McCool and the Salmon of Knowledge. Finn McCool was the greatest warrior that Ireland ever knew, and a poet too. Don't we wish more of our rulers were poets? When Finn McCool was a young babe, not yet weaned from his mother's milk, Finn's father was killed in battle. And Finn's mother was faced with a terrible choice. Maybe the enemy would come and claim my son, murder him so that he could claim the throne. And she was faced with a terrible choice to save her son's life. She hid him in the forest. She gave him to two old druid women, wise in the ways of the woods. They kept him in an ancient hollow oak tree. They raised him upright. They taught him which plants were medicine and which were poisonous. 
Which berries and roots would feed you and which might kill you? They taught him how to fence with sword and shield, for druid women are warriors too. But when Finn was a young buck, they felt that he had learned all they could from him. He had learned all they could from them. He needed a man's presence, so they sent him to Finn Yegis. Now, without a doubt, Finn Yegis is one of the greatest poets that Ireland ever produced. Finn Yegis knew the ancient bards, the stories of our ancestors. But Finn Yegis loved two things. One, of course, being poetry. The other one, fishing. Anybody besides me love to be fishing? But there was one fish in particular that Finn Yegis wanted to catch. It was the fabled salmon of knowledge. As the ancient prophecies foretold, if you were the first to take a morsel of this fish, you would have the gift of tongues, knowledge of all things in this world and the worlds beyond. You would know the languages of bird and beast, fish and flower, who would like to learn the languages of other creatures, to be able to speak to them, but more important, listen and know of what they speak. Well, one day, young Finn was lying by the river Boyne with his two favorite hounds, Bran and Skull. He was watching the clouds race by when he heard his teacher, Finn Yegis, shout, What joy, what rapture, my treasure I capture. Maybe not his best effort at poetry. But he had landed the fabled salmon of knowledge. He brought it to young Finn. He said, Boy, please stoke up the fire. Skin this fish and cook it for me. But whatever you do, don't have a bite, not a morsel. I caught it. It's only right. Finnegis, the poet, have the gift of tongues. Well, young Finn did as he was instructed. He built a roaring fire. He took a slab of granite, a flat stone, and put it on the fire so when the stone was red hot, he could broil the fish. He filleted the fish, and he made a wonderful, wonderful sauce of wild herbs and honey. He had learned from the Druid women. He slathered the salmon with honey, and he put it on the rock, and he watched it. And as it was cooking, under the skin, he saw a little bubble of oil begin to form. And heated by the fire, that bubble of oil began to expand. And as the bubble rose, young Finn went to poke it down. <gasps> oh, the hot oil burst on his thumb. And when he touched his thumb to his tongue and tasted that salmon, his thoughts raced like the clouds in the blue sky. And just in that moment, Finn Yegis came back to the fire. And Finn Yeager said, you done it, didn't you, boy? You tasted the salmon? Now, young Finn was about to refute him, deny it. But somehow he knew in the next moment what Finn Yeager would say. The ancient prophecy said a man named Finn should have the gift of tongues. I thought, I, Finn Yeager, but maybe it's you, boy. Finn McCool, someday you'll be the greatest ruler that Ireland ever knew. And so it is. The story came true. Young Finn ruled Ireland with compassion and wisdom. He had the gift of tongues. He knew the languages of birds and beasts, tree and flower. And again, I ask you, who would like to have such knowledge? The truth is, science is giving us this knowledge. We can learn the languages of other creatures, of dolphins and whales, of bird and beast. You doubt me? National Geographic, I just read an article a couple years ago, a scientist learned the languages of prairie dogs. He began to learn 26 different words. The prairie dogs even had a different call. They barked differently when he wore his hat and when he didn't. Science is giving us this gift. And with knowledge comes responsibility. With knowledge, when we act on it, becomes wisdom. One more time I'll ask, who loves to eat fish? If you haven't tried it yet, don't knock it. The fisheries of the world are collapsing. In so many places we take, we take, we take, and the fishes are disappearing. How many of you catch your own? If you follow the rules, the limits, the regulations, you know it's sustainably harvest. You know it where it came from. When you go to a fancy restaurant or even get a fish sandwich, ask, where did it come from? Is it sustainably harvested? 
With knowledge comes responsibility, and every morsel we put in our mouth is a sacred relationship with the earth and the sea. Thank you. I do love fish, and I love to go fishing, and I love to eat fish. But as you just heard, it is very important to think about where those fish come from. We make choices about sustainability when you more than just read the label, but ask good questions, or better yet, go fishing. That way you know where your fish comes from. And this way you too will care more about the sources of our food. Every morsel you put in your mouth, you can become a clean water champion. Maybe you already are.